uh, next up, we have uh, Lorenzo uh, Frisella who's going to be talking to us about the differences between aquaponic and soil, uh, composted soil biology, and all kinds of other awesome things. I saw his amazing talk at the Aquaponics Association, and when uh, Quan Con Femme had a, a last-minute schedule conflict, he was the first person I wanted to reach out to to try and uh, get on here and talk some science for you guys. So uh, I really appreciate him taking the time. I know it's getting quite late there in London. Uh, so thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it's, uh, it's 10, 10 p.m., but no, no problem whatsoever. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, and uh, the floor is yours, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, I just apologized uh, in advance because my connection today has been a bit spotty, but shouldn't be a problem. We'll see. In any case, if I disconnect, I'll be reconnecting right away in a minute or two, So uh, or less. Uh, so, yeah, just share my screen here. Yep. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lorenzo, uh, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Greenwich in London. And today I'll be telling you all about the organic status of aquaponics in the European Union, uh, some of the rules that hinder its certification, and also the, uh, the effects of uh, soil addition uh, as investigated in four different experiments that I've done this year. I've done quite a bit, and uh, although I do not uh, grow cannabis, I think uh, it will be an interesting talk nonetheless, as I'll be experimenting. I'll be telling you how I experimented with different types of soil mixes, compost, and uh, uh, certified uh, topsoil as well. So uh, what is soil? Uh, it's funny, I've been investigating uh, soil for the past year, and I still don't have a clear definition for it. Uh, I do know that soil can be uh, loosely defined as a mixture of uh, microorganisms, liquids, gases uh, that together support life. Uh, and although it's true that in most cases uh, you cannot have plants without soil, the opposite is equally true. Uh, in most cases you cannot have soil without plants. I first started investigating about soil uh, when I, after, right after my last publication at the beginning of this year titled uh, Organic Aquaponics in the European Union Towards Sustainable Farming Practices in the Framework of the New EU Regulation. Uh, here I uh, argue that um, although in theory and in practice, aquaponics does fulfill nearly all uh, organic farming principles based on the EU regulation, uh, aquaponics is still uh, not allowed to produce organic uh, vegetables in the European Union, as well as fish. Uh, this is because of several rules that currently hinder its, uh, its status, the status of, of, of aquaponics in the European Union. Uh, <clears throat> commercial, aqu commercial aquaponic uh, farms and um, um, are, and operations are uh, very few in Europe, but fewer than 50, there are fewer than 50 companies, and very few of those are able to make profit. profit. Um, Indeed, a commercial aquaponics is unable to take off. And uh, it is thought that organic certification could enhance the commercialization of aquaponics, uh, aquaponic produce. Uh, this is because in general, um, aqua organic produce is about 47% more expensive than, um, than uh, regular produce. Uh, the, there are several features in aquaponics uh, that uh, are in line, directly in line with organic principles, with EU organic principles. As you all know, aquaponics uh, is characterized by a low uh, water usage, water can be recycled, it is space efficient, uh, tank, fish tanks and, and, and plant, plant spaces, plant tanks can be uh, readjusted in really um, numerous ways. Uh, it's based on the recycle of waste, uh, it's based on natural cycles and the principles, uh, the same principles, the same cycles happen in any really aquatic ecosystem. Uh, escapees are nearly impossible because uh, you use a recycling aquaculture system in case of coupled aquaponics at least. Uh, and uh, it, it can be located really anywhere. And uh, you have, uh, because of high water parameter control, you can guarantee, uh, high, you can guarantee high uh, welfare standards for your fish. And obviously, uh, no use of pesticides, which can be toxic for the fish. It uh, should therefore be uh, logical to assume that aquaponics should be uh, certified, like aquaponic produce should be certified as organic. But that's obviously, uh, as I said, not the case in the European Union. And that's why we're here. 
because of the nature of aquaponics, the symbiotic nature of aquaponics, um, rules from both the plant production side and the aquaculture production side, um, they, they hinder its, its certification. Uh, these are from the latest regulation, 2018-848, uh, which is coming into, which is becoming active, coming into place next year. I will start with the plant production rules real quick, uh, and then I'll tell you what can be done about these rules. Um, first of all, organic crops in, in, in the European Union have to be produced in living soil and in connection with the subsoil and bedrock to be considered organic. Uh, soil, therefore, went from being considered a physical entity to also a spatial one. It, uh, it also matters whether your soil is directly connected to the earth. Um, and uh, second of all, hydroponic production is prohibited. And by default, since aquaponics is considered a type of hydroponics in the European Union, uh, aquaponics is also prohibited in organic production. Uh, the fertility and biological activity of the soil have to be maintained and increased. Uh, and uh, therefore there is this uh, stress also on, again, on the, on the use of soil. Soil is an entity that must be used in organic uh, horticulture and agriculture in general. And uh, fish waste is not allowed to be used as fertilizer since it's not, uh, there is no mention of it in the whole regulation. And this is actually, I actually contacted the European Commission two years ago when I started my PhD. Uh, and I asked them about this and they confirmed that since they just don't, don't talk about it, uh, that means that uh, uh, it's, it's not, it's not uh, usable, it's not allowed. It's the use of fish waste is not allowed to be used as fertilizer. And this is in direct um, conflict with the use of livestock uh, manure, for example, livestock waste which uh, whose use is not only uh, allowed, uh, but also encouraged. So there is this uh, stress on the uh, recycle of waste, but then that doesn't apply on any waste from any aquatic organism. Uh, these are the three main rules that uh, prevent aquaculture uh, produce, you know, fish and other aquatic animals produced uh, aquaponically from being certified as organic. First of all, uh, in, in plain letters, it's written that closed, uh, circulating circulation aquaculture um, systems, so RAS, um, are um, are prohibited, and uh, and that any artificial cooling or heating of water is really not permitted for any broodstock or any animal that's uh, that's going to be slaughtered and and eaten. Uh, they can only be used for um, for hatcheries and nurseries. And uh, finally, uh, the bottom type of, uh, of the tanks has to be as close as possible to natural conditions. And uh, this is really because uh, you have this feeling um, in the regulation that uh, um, really uh, regular tanks used in RAS are these barren environments, which are um, fundamentally bad for fish welfare. Uh, fish require their intelligent animals that require high stimulation. And these barren environments, these empty environments, uh, they just don't provide this, this natural stimulation and the fish need uh, to thrive and to have uh, good welfare. Um, yeah, so these are the three main, really, uh, obstacles for um, fish and other aquatic animals. Um, this way, the, the aquaponic cycle that we, we all know, it gets hindered, it gets blocked by these, by these rules. Uh, first of all, uh, the absence of soil, um, um, my, microbes, you know, bacteria that do uh, uh, lots of the, a lot of the work, a big portion of the work in an aquaponic system, uh, they, they, uh, since soil is not present, they, they they're, they're not, they're, they, they, um, this, this absence of soil hinders its, their, their use, their, they're, they're working. Um, and, and second of all, fish waste, the use of fish waste as fertilizer is not allowed. So uh, uh, you can take this, this waste, it's processed waste by the bacteria, and, uh, but it still cannot be used for vegetables uh, in, in, in organic agriculture. And third of all, uh, recirculating aquaculture systems are not allowed. Uh, so the, what, the, uh, what, what the fish produce cannot uh, cannot be used for plants. And when the plants cannot clean the water for the fish and the whole, the whole cycle really crumbles and uh, and therefore you go uh, you you arrive to uh, to the state to the the the, the, um, the state of things where we are that you know where fish and plants cannot be certified as organic what can be done then
Oh, looks like we had a connection issue again. I'm sure we'll have him back here in a second. I do apologize. And we have uh, all these international guests. Occasionally we do have some connection errors. I'm sure he'll be back with us momentarily. Uh, if you guys haven't already, go to ap420.com. Sign up with your email for a chance to win a Spectrum King 403 Lite, a full nutrient line for up to 300 gallon system, uh, basically a typical backyard system uh, for from veg and flower, uh, as well as the full copy of the Aquaponic Cannabis uh, Masterclass. We'll be doing that drawing on Sunday, so be sure to sign up over the course of the weekend. Uh, and then we'll also have some other giveaways here as well over the, the course of the weekend as well. I guess his battery died or something. I guess he'll be back here shortly. Not sure about quite what happened there. Hopefully you guys are having a good weekend. Again, sorry for the delay. These things happen. Let me fix the uh, description here as well. While we're waiting for him to come back. Does anybody have any questions at the moment? I hope you guys enjoy it. I tried to get quite a bit more diverse uh, group of speakers uh, than last year as far as topics. Uh, so we have quite a few different uh, experts in various different fields. We've had some great talks today. Uh, and uh, uh, at the end of this talk, we'll only be a quarter of the way through the conference. So I hope you guys really enjoy uh, the talks that we've had today. Oh, looks like he's back with us again. Um, thanks. Uh, I'm really sorry. I, I was afraid. <laughs> it happens. We hey, hey, when we have this many people all over the world, man, we're bound to have a few connection blips. I'll let you uh, take take okay, the floor back. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as I was saying, uh, <laughs> sorry again about it, but. Uh, yeah, so uh, soil addition in aquaponics, it's never been really explored and uh, it could have uh, potential effects, uh, potentially positive effects. For example, it could allow the addition of uh, solid fish waste, uh, use of uh, beneficial organisms such as mycorrhizae or, uh, or, um, or bacteria that form symbiotic, uh, symbiotic um, effects on fish health and possibly enhance plant growth as well. The second way uh, we could approach this is to use environmental enrichment in the recycling aquaculture systems. Um, environmental enrichment can be, uh, has been defined as an animal husbandry principle that seeks to enhance the quality of captive animals by uh, care, by identifying and providing the ecological well-being. Uh, therefore, it's really about enriching the environment of aquatic animals, making it look more similar to, uh, to their natural environment, uh, this way improving their welfare. And there are many uh, different types of environmental enrichment, namely physical, sensory, dietary, social, and occupational. And uh, as you can guess, it's got, it's got a wide application in, in grass. You can really edit the, uh, the shape of the tanks. You can uh, uh, modify the light, uh, add objects, shelters uh, for the fish, as well as uh, different substrates. Uh, and although this has uh, been poorly researched, this could uh, really mimic the natural environment of fish and, and, and really bring, uh, you know, change the reputation of RAS. Um, the same way that it's been already, it's already been done in uh, first in zoological, zoolog zoological gardens, in zoos, and, and then uh, in, uh, uh, for livestock, for the livestock, in the livestock industry. So uh, this could be the next frontier as to improve, as to how to improve uh, um, welfare in, in, in captive fish in tanks and, uh, and subsequently, hopefully, uh, reach organic certification for grass grown fish. Uh, if we do this, then the, uh, the, the, the cycle uh, could, could once again start. Uh, we could, the soil addition 
uh, would uh, would make uh, would make these beneficial microbes available again uh, and uh, and possibly enrich the diversity of these microbes. Uh, the fish waste could be uh, beneficial for soil fertility. Uh, <clears throat> this is still to be yet to be researched. Uh, and then finally, environmental enrichment could, by mimicking the natural environment of the fish, could uh, result in better welfare and uh, therefore um, allowing RAS to be uh, to be used uh, in organic um, agriculture and aquaculture. And this is a really a organic, organic aquaponic uh, system, a concept that I've, I've developed. Um, and uh, here you can see, for example, in the aquaculture a unit, you have shelters, aquatic plants, gravel in place. Uh, and so your fish enjoying uh, higher welfare standards. And, and, uh, um, uh, and one day, hopefully, this will be um, um, allowed to be, to be used in organic fish production. And uh, soil will then be collected and uh, process, further process, either aerobically or anaerobically. And you have the, your plant unit where, where plants are grown in soil, in um, pots with soil, in this case, herbs, for example, which constitute an exception to the rule, therefore could be grown in, uh, in pots and do not necessarily have to uh, be grown in a connection with the subsoil and bedrock. And, and then this, this waste could be, um, could be further, uh, yeah, after it's been processed, could be uh, put back into the, on top of the soil, the, thus enriching, further enriching the, uh, the, the soil where the plants are grown. And uh, I have to say, this, this, this is just a concept. And as of now, it's still not usable in organic, uh, for organic aquaponic production, since uh, RAS units are not allowed and uh, use of fish waste is not allowed to be used to, to, uh, for, for, uh, as a fertilizer. And this is really just a, a general uh, a diagram that I've developed uh, where, you know, I show uh, how aquaponics really uh, addresses the three pillars of sustainability, uh, social sustainability, environmental sustainability, and economic sustainability by blending together organic horticulture and organic aquaculture. And uh, this, this comes with a variety of benefits uh, that you can see all around. And you can find this, this graph uh, in, uh, in my paper as well. Okay, this is all uh, nice and uh, uh, sounds, sounds all good in theory, but what can we do in practice? Uh, how can we address these rules? How can we change things? And uh, likely I find myself in really uh, one of the best uh, spots to do this. This is where I work. Uh, this is the Department of, uh, Department of Landscape Architecture uh, at the University of Greenwich in London. And uh, it's really a great place to work. We have a variety of, uh, of green roofs. Uh, we grow lots of plants. We have trees, uh, fruit trees, and even a couple of ponds with fish. And uh, I'd like to give you a short tour of our facilities and, um, and show you where, um, to show you where each experiment took place. And then from there, we can explore each experiment and show you um, what I found. Uh, so this is the uh, a greenhouse. Uh, it looks more uh, like a jungle than, a, than a, an aquaponic unit, really. The plants have officially taken over. And uh, we here we grow a variety of plants, uh, more than 20 species, as well as uh, about 400 uh, fish, all Nile tilapia. And this is what I've grown, my biggest gourd yet. Uh, I was so excited that I've uh, I've captured it, I've, I've taped it uh, growing, and uh, yeah, it was a proud moment for me. Uh, so you can this shows you the variety of uh, really of plants that you can grow here. We have lots of vines and different types of pumpkins and gherkins and squashes that just grow all around it. Uh, really a magical place. This is our um, uh, the main. Uh, horticultural section of our green roof, uh, our second floor green roof. And this is where two of my experiments took place. Uh, this is experiment number one on onions that I've done, uh, started uh, right before summer. Um, here, what I've done, I took uh, four uh, raised beds, um, and you can see here, and I split them into four sections, each of them, using waterproof um, screens that would prevent uh, water from each subsection to, to mix up with the, with the rest of them. And I took onion sets, which are um, immature, uh, unripe onions, uh, one-year-old onions, um, uh, and uh, I planted 12 in each, in each subsection. Uh, I did this in order to, to challenge the, 
the following obstacles. Uh, first of all, that manure is the only accepted animal source fertilizer and uh, in organic production. And second of all, uh, and um, that the most, more specifically, that fish waste is not deemed as an appropriate source of fertilizer. I also wanted to challenge the required connection with subs uh, by using uh, race beds. As a matter of fact, many, uh, for example, Scandinavian countries now, uh, which uh, have been high, uh, relying high, highly on uh, heavily on uh, um, cultures similar to race beds uh, for organic production of vegetables, now will be uh, will uh, they will have to adapt and change culture and conditions. So I wanted to use race beds also to show that this this connection, this reward, required connection uh, with the subsoil and bedrock, isn't really necessary. Um, I did this by comparing the growth of onions in race beds uh, in, in a soil that had manure in it versus soil that was watered with, with fish water, with fish affluence. My hypothesis uh, were, were that uh, both the soil fertility and the plant growth would be enhanced by the, the addition of fish affluence and that the greater effect would be observed in a soil that was treated with fish sludge. So I used two, two different types of, of fish water. I will get into that soon. Uh, and uh, but uh, my hypothesis was was that the richer the, the water that was richer in nutrients would have a, a more uh, beneficial effects of, for plant growth as well as for soil fertility, which is highly important for organic production based on the rules. As well as the, I wanted to to, to also I, I thought that the uh, the use of fish affluence would be more beneficial for plant growth than the use of land mammal, which. Uh, uh, as, as I talked about earlier, uh, fish affluents are not allowed uh, in organic production, but manure is. So I wanted to show that actually that fish affluents could be more useful and more productive as a, as a fertilizer, although, although they are currently prohibited. So uh, each, each race bag was split into four, four sections and I planted a total of, of uh, 12 onions uh, in each subsection. Uh, so I had a total of 16 uh, subsections. And, uh, and the onions were numbered from one to 12 in each, uh, in each small section. This gave me a total of 192 onions. Uh, and uh, I used a, uh, random, a complete randomized block design with four uh, treatments and four replicates for each treatment, T, M, F, and F, S. Uh, in T, uh, I only used tap water. So I, I would only water the onions with regular water. Uh, and M was my manure uh, treatment. Uh, here I had put horse manure in the soil before culturing the onions. And here I would also water, water each section with just plain, plain water. Uh, in the F treatment, uh, I used uh, uh, um, uh, filtered fish water, which was taken from the top of the, the gasser tank. So a water that was devoid of any uh, particles. And for the FS, um, treatment, I used uh, uh, fish sludge, fish sludge mi mixed with water, which is what I would get uh, after uh, taking the water from the bottom of the clarifier and then further processing it aer aerobically. That would, I would do this every third day and the rest of the days I would water it with fish water, water each treatment, each replicate of, of the FS treatment with, with just regular fish water, filtered fish water, and every third day with the unfiltered fish water. This is how I further uh, process the, uh, the, the water that will be used for the FS uh, uh, treatment. I built uh, just a very straightforward aerobic digester. I would aerate it constantly and uh, this aeration would further break down the, uh, the nutrients and make it more available for the plants. This gave me two types of water, uh, uh, F and FS. Uh, Again, F is the water with no solids in it, taken from the top of the, the gas process aerobically. I also analyzed these two water types, uh, and I found that uh, really there was a, stri a striking difference in, uh, in the nutrient concentration uh, of the two, of the two uh, waters, uh, especially in uh, the amounts of nitrates, uh, uh, phosphorus, and potassium, which are arguably the most important nutrients for plant production. And uh, in some cases, uh, the, the, the amount of nutrients in these three were more than double in the, in the fish sludge than in the fish water. The onions quickly started growing. Uh, they kept growing. They didn't stop. And after three months, they were ready for harvest. It was in the middle of the summer. And um, it was an interesting day. Harvest 
reaching almost 200 onions. Um, and after this, the first thing I did was uh, measuring the, uh, the physical uh, parameters of each onion. What I, what I did was I measured a variety of parameters. Uh, first of all, I took the whole uh, <coughs> a max plant length or height uh, from the bottom of the bulb to the top of the tallest leaf. I then measured the, uh, the leaf uh, weight. I, I, I separated the leaves from, uh, from the bulbs. And this gave me the bulb uh, weight, uh, the bulb diameter I measured, and as, as well as the bulb height. I then analyzed that really the same pattern would show up. So I did a, uh, an ANOVA, a one-way ANOVA, and then a Tuki, a Tuki test uh, to determine the significance, uh, the, really the difference of the means and uh, potential significance. Um, and I found really the same pattern all across uh, the, these measurements. Um, FS, so the unfiltered fish water, the fish sludge, if you want to call it that way, uh, was the one that performed the best. Uh, Guanian's water with fish sludge uh, produced the biggest and, uh, and heaviest plants in this case, followed by uh, filtered fish water, followed by manure, and then finally uh, tap water. The same pattern. It's also it's um, it's uh, important to uh, to notice that uh, there was no significant difference between F and FS, so between the two fish waters. The same pattern was observed for the rest of the measurements. So for max plant length, you can see you can, you can see the same. Uh, the two fish waters produced the tall the the uh, the tallest plants or um, the longest, which way whatever whichever way you wanna you wanna look at it from. Uh, and uh, the same, same pattern about the bulb weight, incredibly. And finally, about this, the bulb diameter as well. Uh, so really the same pattern. Uh, and so the two fish waters performed better than manure in all cases, in all measurements. I then analyzed the soil uh, and I, I ran a, a variety of measurements. Uh, I measured uh, different types of nitrates uh, of N um, uh, amounts. Uh, from uh, nitrates, from ammonium, and 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 also uh, generally uh, the the um, the, uh, comp the, um, the total uh, available nitrogen, as well as trace elements. I measured the pH of the soil, as well as many different trace elements: phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, and so on. And then finally, uh, this in um, um, it hasn't been done yet, but I will uh, send uh, the sample to be analyzed soon for microbial analysis. So I wanted to find out whether there would be a, a difference in, in biodiversity uh, uh, be, uh, among all the different treatments, and especially between the ones where I, where I use manure versus uh, uh, fish affluents, fish waters. And I know you probably cannot see the, the column on the right hand side very clearly, but it is just to show you that uh, each, each nutrient uh, in the soil from each treatment to all growing conditions of the onions. And uh, this, will give, this then in turn gave me uh, a, a rating for each nutrient uh, going from, from uh, the target nutrient to marginal uh, to deficient or excessive, uh, whether it was green, yellow, and, uh, and red respectively. Uh, and from these, these results, uh, you, we, we can inquire that uh, um, the, uh, the manure soil, the soil that had manure in it, had excessive copper and zinc values, but also much higher uh, phosphorus and, and, and potassium values than, than the soil that was watered with fish waters. Um, on the other hand, the uh, soil that was watered with fish waters uh, had much, much higher uh, nitrate values, especially in the unfiltered fish water uh, treatment, uh, which, uh, which had uh, a nit nitrate value uh, three times as much as the, the manure soil, which is really incredible. My, three, my uh, initial three hypotheses were therefore fulfilled, uh, uh, proven right, rather. Uh, soil fertility and plant growth were enhanced by, addition, by the addition of fish affluents, and the biggest effect was observed in the, in the soil treated with, with fish sludge. Uh, and uh, fish affluents were indeed more beneficial than manure, uh, surprisingly, uh, or maybe not. Uh, and uh, the two uh, further hypothesis, hypotheses are still not, uh, I still don't have an answer for that uh, since uh, the, um, the samples are being analyzed. 
but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the microbial activity and diversity would be much higher in the soil that was fertilized with uh, with this active microbial mixture uh, resulted resulting from uh, from from fish waste from 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 just uh, fish effluents. The main findings from this trial in this experiment were therefore that uh, the uh, really the, all the measured parameters in the onions were uh, following the same pattern going from tea uh, the tap water increasing in the manure soil uh, and increasing in the two fish waters. Um, it's however important to notice that, that there was no significant difference between the F and FS uh, treatments so that between the two fish waters and uh, fish water indeed did perform better as a fertilizer than, uh, than manure. And this could be possibly explained by the much higher nitrate content that uh, fish water had. Uh, there could also have been uh, important uh, microbial uh, effects. Uh, we don't know that yet, uh, but uh, we will see soon. This takes me to the second experiment that I've, I've done uh, uh, on bok choy. Uh, I grew bok choy outside uh, and uh, in, um, in certified topsoil in these uh, small containers. And I used this net to protect them from, uh, from preventing these pesky visitors from, uh, from uh, really uh, ruining my crop. Uh, and uh, these are the larvae of the cabbage white butterfly and I did all I could to prevent them from eating my, my bok choy. Um, I did this trial to, uh, to challenge really the same um, obstacles that I challenged in the onions trial. Uh, really the, uh, the fact that manure is the only accepted source of fertilizer and, uh, and, and also I was also challenging the required connection with the subsoil and bedrock by culturing by um, I did this by growing um, bok choy in certified topsoil, British certified topsoil uh, in manure versus soil water with fish affluents. And I used, uh, this time I used uh, certified uh, topsoil because this is the layer is, which is, that is directly at the top of the, uh, the soil layer. So directly at the top of the, on top of the subsoil and bedrock, uh, which, um, which, which are, whose, whose connection uh, with, the, with the topsoil is required in organic um, agriculture. So I wanted to directly challenge the fact that uh, this connection is necessary in the organic agriculture. I used uh, the same treatments that I used in the onions trial, this time using three replicates for each treatment. And I haven't analyzed the data yet for this, although I wanted to show you just how striking the results were. Uh, these are just pictures I took just from, from I did a photo shoot of each, each plant. Um, and um, you can see the striking difference between the different, the plants, uh, just a random plant I took from each, each treatment, uh, going from very small plant from the, the, the treatment um, where only water was used, uh, mean weight of 10 grams, going from 10 grams to 20 grams in the topsoil and manure treatment, and to, uh, to 50 grams, so double when I started using fish water, to filter fish water, and then to uh, whooping 65.5 grams for each bok choy. And you know, uh, these are small plants and uh, the ones in um, uh, growing in the, in the fish sludge treatment were just huge, especially when compared with the, the ones from the tea treatment. This takes me to the, uh, the, our second greenhouse where it's a smaller greenhouse that we have and we use it for a variety of experiments. I've used it for, uh, to do uh, two experiments this year. And uh, this is the exper yeah, experiment number three, I used basil. And what I did was I took, uh, I took, some, I took some pots, uh, um, 180 pots, and uh, I, I, grew, um, I grew basil in them. I used different types of compost, a compost mix that I, that I made, that I sort of artificially made. Uh, compost, uh, and I use two types of compost, one with, with um, sorry, two types of, of soil mixes, one with compost and one without compost. Uh, and uh, I did this to prove that uh, fish waste is a viable and effective source of fertilizer again, but in, in this case, in, in greenhouse cultivation. Uh, I wanted to prove that uh, fish waste can, uh, can increase soil fertility uh, as wanted by the regulation. And also that the fish waste can, can uh, enhance the production of living soil. And also when, when compost is not uh, present in the soil, it can make the soil living 
it can by inoculating the soil with all these uh, bacteria and living organisms it can uh, it can produce living soil um, uh, I did this uh, by comparing the growth of basil in uh, again in different soils some with compost some without compost and I fertilized them with different with different fish affluents uh, filtered fish water and fish sludge I used uh, six treatments uh, so I used two different types of compost one uh, sorry yeah, of, of, of soil mix uh, one with compost and one without compost and I used uh, either regular water or uh, two, the two uh, fish uh, fish water types and I haven't analyzed the uh, the, the the data yet for this this were all uh, experiments done uh, some of them overlapping so I don't have the the data analyzed yet but I just wanted to show you what I've done uh, and hopefully I'll have the results soon. I'll be sharing them with you in the next conference or next talk. This takes me to experiment number four. I used basil in, in here again. Uh, and I used a variety, of, I used uh, 12 fish tanks and a variety of setups, different setups, different treatments. Um, here at fish, some had no fish. I used different types of, of, of compost again. And uh, I wanted to, uh, yes, and uh, each, each um, I, I built the system in a way that each tank had a, was really a, a, um, a mini uh, coupled aquaponic system. And uh, each, uh, I put a, a tray on top of each tank uh, and, top of, and in the tray, uh, there were uh, several uh, pots um, with, with soil. And uh, I made it so that I could uh, move the tray twice a day uh, and uh, so that the water from the fish tank would be uh, brought up uh, into the tray and then would go back into the tank. Uh, only twice a day because basil is a plant that enjoys periods of, of uh, semi-dry conditions. They, they don't really like to be constantly um, uh, in constantly uh, constantly submerged in water, the roots. They need to be. They need. They want. They like to be aerated, uh, and um, yeah, this would allow me to freely move the the tray back and forth and expose them to fish water uh, for a, um, um, a, a limited amount of time each day. And I did this to prove that aquaponic produce can be certified as organic. Here I used herbs, uh, basil is an herb, and uh, herbs can be grown uh, without this required connection uh, with the topsoil and bedrock. And uh, I wanted to prove that this, this, these systems would, would conceptually, conceptually uh, would in concept be, be possible to, to achieve and to do and to build and to, and to employ as well. Uh, I also wanted to prove that fish, wa uh, fish waste could aid in the maintenance and increase of, of, of soil fertility, uh, as well as that fish waste could enhance the production of living soil. Again, by inoculating the soil with, with fish water, you could produce a soil that was, that was living. Um, and uh, I did this by comparing the growth of basil in different soils, some with compost, some without compost, in tanks with, with fish and without fish. And I used uh, four different treatments. So. Uh, in the CF uh, treatment, I used uh, soil that had compost and that uh, had fish. Uh, and then uh, with the CET uh, treatment, I used compost soil, but without fish. I also used in the IF treatment, a compost-free soil, so soil without compost uh, with fish. And finally, IT uh, compost-free soil uh, without fish. So this would just be a regular horticulture uh, system with, with no fish and um, but inert soil, so in soil with uh, very little nutrients. And uh, I uh, had the data analyzed. These are just two main measurements. Uh, I measured several parameters in basil as well as chlor uh, chlorophyll, um, stem thickness, and um, set numbers of sets of leaves. And I'm just reporting the two main ones, which are final height and final weight. And you can see really the same pattern uh, in these two. Uh, which were also reflected in the other measurements. And uh, uh, CF, so the treatment with, with both compost and fish water performed the best, followed by the one with, surprisingly, by the one with, with compost uh, soil but without fish, followed by the one with inert soil, uh, compost-free soil and fish. And finally, uh, as, as expected, by the one with, uh, um, with, uh, without fish and with, without compost in the soil. Uh, this is surprising uh, because uh, this means that uh, compost uh, somewhat has a, has a better effect on plant growth 
uh, than uh, really fish waste. So there is something in the compost that's making, uh, that's enhancing the growth of the plants in a, in a, better, in a better way, um, more and uh, more, um, um, yeah, and just in a better way than, um, better than, than fish water does. Uh, I therefore found that uh, the, the compost and fish water treatment produced really the, heavy, the heaviest plants, just tallest, heaviest plants. Uh, and that therefore, there seems to be an additive effect uh, of compost and fish water, meaning that in the soil that, that had compost and, and was uh, fertilized with fish water, result, that resulted in, in, in bigger plants. Uh, and the, the two nutrient types, compost and the fish water, um, they, they, uh, they, they added up producing a bigger, a uh, better product. And um, surprisingly, as I said, compost uh, enhanced growth more than fish water did. And uh, again, I'm not, I haven't measured the soil microbiome effects yet, but uh, they're likely, there are likely to be. Um, but I will, uh, we'll present those in the next talk probably. Um, we're having the samples analyzed now. I uh, also wanted to talk about the ongoing experiments uh, and uh, we are currently uh, uh, really running uh, similar experiments that I, the, than the one I did with bok choy by using uh, turnips, so a different crop uh, that can be grown in the fall uh, in, again, certified topsoil, uh, comparing the, the, the effects of manure with uh, fish water, uh, fish waters, I should say. And, uh, and also we are testing the performance of uh, winter cover crop, in this case, barley, uh, that, is, that is grown in a soil that was fertilized with fish affluence previously. So this is very interesting. I'll go into more details about this in the next slide. Um, but uh, yeah, and also I'm, we're planning a different experiment with, uh, with chili peppers uh, in soil-based aquaponics. So similar to the trial I've done with basil in the tanks with fish, uh, but this time using uh, chili pepper, chili peppers, which are a more nutrient demanding uh, crop than uh, basil. So we expect to see differences here also in the, the type of nutrients that are required in the crops. So fruiting crops uh, generally require more uh, phosphorus and, and potassium than, uh, than, um, than for example, uh, basil that doesn't have any, any fruit, doesn't produce any fruits. And this is the, uh, the trial that we're currently doing uh, with barley. Uh, so these are the same, I'm using the same um, raised beds that I use for the onions. Uh, and what I've done, I, I, I sowed uh, barley in these, in these beds. And what I, what I wanna do is just rely on rain, on rain water to, to water uh, the, this crop just like uh, it would be done naturally when cover crops are used. And cover crops are generally used for a variety of reasons, uh, one of which is to prevent uh, nutrients in the soil from being washed down by the rain. So these, uh, these cover crops, cereals could be wheat, barley, oats, uh, would uh, take up all these nutrients and then these crops, this crop would be uh, cut off and the nutrients um, uh, given back to the soil. Uh, instead of being washed down by, by the rain. And uh, so this is exactly what I want to do. I want to find out whether uh, uh, cereals, in this case barley, uh, would absorb these nutrients and then once, and then uh, and, uh, from, from, these, from, from different um, soil subsections where different types of fertilizers were used, in this case manure versus uh, the two fish water types. Uh, and whether this, this could be uh, of use in the future uh, if, uh, if fish, water, fish water starts to be um, uh, used, uh, routinely used in agriculture. And with this, I'd like to thank you all uh, for your time. Uh, for any inquiry, you can inquire, uh, you can uh, reach me at my email here. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you all for uh, listening.
It looks like we had a technical issue there. Are you there? Oh, there we go. Hello? Sorry about that. I had an issue Hi, there. did you... Uh... I'm not sure if the live had it. Uh, you guys, right. uh, did you click? There we go. Uh, you want to put your your show uh, deck back up there? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, did it? Uh, did it all go through? Um, because I I finished my talk and then I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. The yeah. The right at the end. You. It, I don't know if you had a a last page at the end with your uh, info on it, but it looked like it just went. Um, dropped uh, off or something for a second on my end but it looks like we're okay. back now. so you you got the the bit about barley yeah yep there you go oh yeah okay yeah yeah um yeah not sure what it where it cut off uh so did you guys get the uh, bit about barley or not um uh doesn't look like it uh went through here. Do you want to tell us about it again? Looks like we still got another. Oh, sorry, yeah. Sure, sure. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is the really uh, an experiment that we're doing right now uh, where I've, I've seeded barley in um, in the raised beds, the same uh, raised beds that were used for the onion cultivation. And really the goal here is to, uh, to use, um, uh, I, I would just be relying on rain, rainwater uh, for, uh, for watering all these all this barley, and uh, it'll, um, I'll, um, I want to investigate the, the potential for this cover crop to, to absorb the nutrients left in the soil, uh, and uh, and then um, to 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 uh, explore its uh, its application, its future application. Uh, cover crops are generally used for a variety of reasons, and uh, one of the main reasons is to is to take up these nutrients from the soil that would otherwise be washed down by the rain. Uh, so I want to explore the the potential of using this cover crop for uh, taking up these nutrients that would otherwise be lost after the soil has been fertilized with, with fish affluence. So, That's awesome, man. Uh, we have uh, some questions from chat. Um, what hurdles did you face in getting this recognized or and trying to get recognition with, with uh, the EU and you're reaching out to those people? Uh, it sounds like you had quite the, the hassles just trying to even get a hold of them. Uh, what, is there any kind of advice you have for people that are trying to do something similar? Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, we're just beginning to. Well, my papers are really, uh, really have generated quite a stir. Uh, stir. Uh, it have been contacted by several people, and uh, we have forwarded the paper to several EU representatives. Uh, and uh, and really, it's really one of the only uh, papers that have been done on this. So um, I, you know, but but generally, you know, when I asked about the fish water uh, uh, being used as as fertilizer in in um, uh, for plants, I. Um, you know, they, they, they were pretty, I mean, they, they, they were pretty reliable. They replied. And uh, although the, the, bi the biggest uh, obstacle I faced, I would say, is uh, reading through these rules because uh, there is no explanation given whatsoever. These rules are just listed and you just don't know why they say uh, what they say. Uh, and in many cases, they, they're not really uh, based on any uh, scientific principle uh, uh, for example, there is a rule where it says that only for freshwater fish, the uh, the bottom of the of the um, of the uh, uh, tank or pond or uh, it should it should be uh, uh, natural earth. And you're like, why is this? What or, or rather, why does this only apply to carp or similar? They say also similar freshwater fish. Uh, so it's just um, I don't know what, what are similar freshwater fish to carp. You're not really offering any any clear uh, definition so uh, it's and it's all like that you know they just um, yeah they 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 list what the rules are but there is no explanation so that's really the biggest hurdle I've faced. We had a, another question did you run into any micronutrient issues with any of the test groups? Uh, so yes I so actually the the here yeah, let me just go back a sec uh, yeah here in the this experiment actually, uh, I've uh, this is the this is a follow up experiment. It would just take too long. It would have taken too long to uh, to uh, tell you about both of them. But uh, in the first experiment, I've actually used uh, some some treatments had no soil at all. So the first experiment on this was to comparing soil less aquaponics with soil based aquaponics. 
and actually in the in the um, in the treatments where soil was not present uh, there was a clear uh, iron deficiency uh, which and we supplied iron into the water uh, otherwise the plants would have just died they were just yellowing and but it was a clearly uh, iron deficiency sign uh, and the, the plants jumped back up but in very interestingly uh, the same was not noticed in, in the soil, even in the soil that was uh, without compost. So uh, in the soil-based aquaponic treatments that had uh, uh, nutrient-free uh, uh, soil, uh, there was no deficiency whatsoever. So there was enough iron in it to, uh, to provide um, good growth, to guarantee uh, good optimal growth for basil. Uh, Awesome. Uh, we had another question. They asked, what type of manure did you use for this experiment? Horse, uh, horse manure. Yeah, it was a uh, composted horse manure. And uh, really, I feel like that's one of the edges uh, that uh, fish effluents have, because we are using these live cultures of uh, this you know, <clears throat> mixture of, uh, of bacteria and all, and all sorts of microorganisms. And uh, uh, while for manure, really, it's composted manure, which is also, yes, it, it does have microorganisms, but uh, it just, uh, it can, in my opinion, it cannot be compared uh, with a live culture and live active culture of, um, of organisms such as the one found in, in fish water. Let me see what other questions we have here, just scrolling through chat. Um... Uh, uh, they're also asking if um, uh, you have any other thoughts on the organic certification. I know in the United States, you can get organic certified in aquaponics through Oregon Tilt. Um, you still can't get certified. Not in fish though, right? Yeah, so they actually... <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, they actually do have an organic certification uh, as of a year or two ago for fish, uh, just recently um, uh, that they, they came up with. But um, mm -hmm. uh, currently, you cannot get a meat processing license if you're growing th above 0.3% THC uh, for cannabis because uh, they cannot step mm -hmm. foot in because it's, a, it's still technically federally restricted. So um, while you can get CBD or CBG or vegetables are organic certified, you still cannot get THC varietals organic certified in the United States mm -hmm. uh, outside of state certification programs, obviously. Okay. But uh, we have all kinds of, of goofy loot uh, issues with um, legality around uh, cannabis, but uh, less so on uh, on the on the rest. of compost in the form of fish waste and leftover. of soil uh, that they can use for soil gardens, which is another thing that I think people don't often talk about a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, is there any other tests that you wish you could have done or, or comparisons or other crops that you're looking forward to doing similar experiments with? You talked about peppers. Is there any other things that you're looking forward to trying or, or experimenting well, one, with? One idea, uh, yeah, one idea I had, although I'm not sure I'm gonna have time to, uh, to really uh, investigate, uh, on is the use of uh, mycorrhizae and uh, beneficial bacteria. So there are some papers by this researcher Meng Meng uh, on that uh, they used uh, this symbiotic bacteria. They inoculated uh, these uh, these um, this really uh, mix soil mixes with with these beneficial bacteria and then they exposed them with uh, with fish water and they and they found. Uh, that uh, these beneficial bacteria, they actually help with nutrient retention and uh, increase the productivity of the uh, just uh, of, 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 of the crops. Uh, and uh, something similar would be really, really, uh, really cool to do with mycorrhizae. So inoculate using the fact that you, uh, using, you're using soil and inoculating soil with uh, these beneficial fungi to form uh, connections with the roots and see whether uh, they uh, enhance uh your uh well improved the the health and uh and uh, and um, the quantity of, of, of your crop that's awesome well uh how yeah. can people so find out more about you and, uh, yeah. 
I was gonna say, how can people find out more about you and how can they find out more about that wonderful paper that you put together? Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, you, you can find your research case. Uh, just Google uh, my name, name, last name, and research gate on, uh, on my email, and or just Google organic aquaponics, European Union, and my paper will come up. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for all of your awesome research, and thank you for your time. Uh, I certainly really enjoyed uh, hearing your uh, talk at the association, and then seeing your longer format version here was really a treat for everybody. I think uh, a lot of us got a lot of what, great insight uh, around uh, organic certification and some of the challenges and then, you know, why some of the stuff when you grow them in comparison uh, uh, grows so much better with the addition of aquatic microbes. So um, uh, thanks so much for that talk. It really was great. Um, thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Take it easy.